Westside Community Collaborative, and it was initially a five-year plan. The idea is block by block. Um, here we've got houses that are two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, and you go one block over and buy a house for two thousand dollars. So one hundred times multiple. So the plan was to, to to change the perception block by block. It's fifteen blocks deep. So the idea was if we took you know three blocks a year in five years, we'd be all the way to the river. This is uh, where, where Rhode Island and Brayton and West Utica all come together. And it's an important cross-section because it radiates out into the other areas. Right. Block by block by block, we're transforming. So what's happening is we're bringing this neighborhood back. Purchase this building here and these lots and we've opened up a garden center. So every single corner here is all being transformed. We've gotten funding from a number of, of areas and we're putting a park in. And the city didn't plant these trees. We planted these trees. The city didn't plant this garden, we planted this garden. We did the mural, we painted the building, we're putting in the garden center. We are the city. This block of Essex right here had two completely vacant structures and four structures that were partially vacant. Yeah. The property values were plummeting, there was a Dominican drug gang on the street, there was prostitution on the street, there was very little home ownership, and the people that did own were starting to leave. Just the sense of community, people, they're, they're, they're neighborly, they look out for each other, and I think that's been the secret to you know, the preservation of this block in particular, as well as it kind of having a ripple effect throughout the area. Um, this one they turned into a daycare center. Then they bought these lots over here, and we got them the fencing, and we got them some funds for a playground. Then they bought this greenhouse here, which they've turned into a community house, and it's a safe place for the kids to play. And this is all, all things that the Brundridge family has done on this block without spending a lot of money. And they didn't wait for the city, <laughs> whoever the city is, to come fix it. They said, hey, this is our neighborhood. We're going to work on this. It's a beautiful uh, neighborhood. What's the secret of this, this street here? Um, you know, lots of homeowners and, and good people that live here, and uh, people take care of their properties and uh, gardens. And, um, you know, it's pretty tight knit, and you know, people watch out for each other. We're going to clean it out. We're going to help her put a new roof on. We've helped her get some financing through the housing agency. And we're gonna help, we'll help her clean up the yard, and she's just gonna have this beautiful house inexpensively to raise her daughter in. For a heck of a lot less than she's paying in rent right now, she's gonna yeah. be a homeowner. Uh, the, the drugs and the crime were, were pretty rampant down the street. But instead of, of saying, hey, you know, we just have to arrest everybody, you know, where are the police? That's going to fix the problem. We concluded that the landlord that owned these four properties was the problem. His goal was to not put any money in the property and just get whatever he could out of it, which was mm -hmm. destroying the neighborhood. So he was sucking money out of the neighborhood, not just his properties. That's a bad landlord? Yeah. Why? What, is, what, what? makes him a bad landlord? Well, he don't fix the water leaks, he don't fix nothing. You know what, in the White House here? No, on 28th Street. On what street? On 28th. 28, 19 What's the name of the landlord? So what we did is we pushed him through housing court. He was, he was told he had to either fix the properties, sell them, or go to jail. Away from this main part are getting better. This part isn't. And what's wrong with this part? I mean, what are some of the problems? Gang violence, drug wars, everything. You see it? Uh, you Stuff like you see it every day. You see it every day. Uh, so you, why are you happy? You seem happy though. <laughs> hey, know? I'm happy because my life is what it is. Your life is good? Good, yeah. Your life is good. It's just getting worse. Yeah. No, no improvement. How long have you been here living on the website? All my life, 43 years. 43 years? Mm-hmm. What's it like raising a family? Is it tough here? Or? Yeah, a little tough sometimes. Tell me some good things about the neighborhood. Uh, the ice cream truck always comes. Um, there's a lot of nice people on the streets. How about some bad things? you see any bad things about the neighborhood? People painting all over the walls and stuff like that. People getting into fights, having the cops come to their house. There was other bad
I think you got the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's still a lot of drug dealing going on, violence, you know, loud, crazy music, you know, a lot of demonic activity, I call it, you know. Right now, not too good. You think it improved in any way from before, or did it get worse? Worse. Any, anything positive you can say about it, or negative? Uh, positive? Yeah. The weather's nice. <laughs> um, any negative things? Well, they just broke into this machine, and the day before they broke in the other side. You can feed my whole base, you can feed my walls. Other than that, things are great. Thank you. Welcome. All right now. On the west side, dealing with the beat. What do you think about the neighborhood? The neighborhoods are pretty good. Yeah. It's interesting because it's life. You can see people prospering and doing things. It's not quite like the east side. You know, the east side sort of real depressing, but it's because life ain't painting the buildings. See, that's why I'm surrendering to the dance floor. I've lived on the west side all my life, born and raised on the west side, on Plymouth. And grew up here uh, with nine sisters and brothers. My parents are from Puerto Rico. We've made our entire life here on the west side. We're sitting here on Mac the 19th. West Side is coming to fire, you know what I'm saying? We pulling we all pulling together for community. We all won. It's not too much burglaries, home invasions that used to go on. It's just, you know, it's changing slowly but surely. We all pulling together. As you can see, we got people working on houses over here, you know. We all trying to build our community back up and, you know, especially when we lay our head down at night. Dug up Main Street out in uh, Clarence. We got a lot of this dolomite. It was all dug up, and we helped ourselves to it. Then they didn't mind. And I wanted it. I didn't want to look like masonry. I wanted it to look like the glacier dumped it. So that's why it's random. But for us to push the, the, the low-income people out of the neighborhood would be an awful thing for the city and for the region. Now this is this is a good block to show something that I think is very important, and it's economic diversity. So on this block, we've got this property which is near half a million dollar um, investment that they made in this city to a Habitat for Humanity house right across the street. Ah. And it works. Uh, poverty is the number one problem uh, that we see in the district. Um, and it's a very complicated problem to deal with. It's employment, it's housing, um, it's quality of life, it's you know all sorts of things. The fact that it is the poorest Latino community in the United States uh, which is, you know, sort of a shocking statistic. People living over here on $7,000 a year per capita um, in a very wealthy country. I've been working on the west side for a big part of my uh, 22 years on the fire department. Uh, I've seen a lot of change in the west side. I was born on the west side. My family all came here from Italy and moved to the west side of Buffalo and there was a lot of tradition back then. And I see other uh, generations of uh, people moving into the country and settling into the west side and making it their own. We have new immigrants from, from Africa, from the Middle East, from parts of Eastern Europe, from um, Southeast Asia. This is a melting pot. We have, of course, um, what you find in most parts of the city, we have a huge Spanish population. We have 
an old Italian population. We have um, an African American population. And it's the community that makes it great. And unfortunately, we're not, we're not getting the services that we need to continue to prosper. Ultimately, I think the way that we're getting so much done is that we're helping convince neighbors they need to stop waiting for someone else to come fix the problem, that, that no one is on their way to fix the problem, to stop being angry with whoever this is they're waiting to come fix the problem, that they need to start working on the problem themselves. Um, three tenants were obviously drug dealers. Rhode Island Street was a vacant property for the last nine months. The uh, landlady is living in, uh, was, was living in Florida. Uh, she has come back to uh, fix up the property and try to rent it out. She and then came back because we, we put her through housing court. Chief Barry, tomorrow morning or Friday morning, will be escorting the last people out of 16th Street. We're going to solve this problem with, say, arrests and convictions alone and evictions without uh, an emphasis on prevention. I'm proud to say that the trees that we planted a half ago um, actually are making it, and I don't know how. <laughs> Three weeks left in the season to have the pool closed. Um, there's been issues where the pool has been closed due to uh, vandalism. John is in the process of restoring the, the one across the street from those three. Push is working on another one, um, and now LV's got these two others, so we only, only have a couple of vacant properties left on Chenango, the time we originally had, so good things happening on Chenango. <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing? You want some fish? We started working with the resettlement agencies and we put some Somali families into the houses because the Somali families didn't care. <laughs> you know, they, they, they came here from Somalia. They, they, they didn't know 19th Street from anything. So we filled all the drug houses with these, these refugee families, all these kids playing in the streets. It was uh -huh. just wonderful. So instead of kids dealing on the street, we had kids playing on the street. Not every neighborhood is really welcoming of refugee families. This street loved them. It was a crowd we can come in and dance, have a good time on the weekend. But well, not anymore. And how long have you been in the neighborhood? Oh, about 50 years. What was it like 50 years ago? It was a beautiful, nice. But today you see nothing but they can beat them down, turn the tree. People, I don't know, steal and break the house. They're a lot different. A lot different now. Yeah. See, I used to work better than I feel. I get to do it for my head to side now. Good. Because I did my pension check, I did social security. Very good. All right. We decided to do a uh, community service project which would allow the students to work directly with the building. The building was condemned uh, and it was also slated for demolition. So our goal was to save the building. There was no real reason for this building to come down. It was in, it was in perfectly good shape uh, and simply needed to have some structural work done to it to stabilize it. And during that one semester, as I said, we, uh, we worked hard to empty the building out, to stabilize it, to secure it, and also to kind of reinvent its, uh, its appearance for the community. Um, they donated to the uh, Muslim community to make it as a mosque, which is a, mas a masjid. And um, it's coming soon. Um, uh, it's under construction. It's, it's going to be done sooner. Then um, people will come here and just pray. How long have you been a police officer? I've been a police officer for almost 22 years. I'm going to start my 22nd year soon. All in Buffalo? All in Buffalo. Violent crime is down about 7%. The most wanted in the city off the street, he had a sawed off shotgun in his possession as the police approached him. So, and then last night they got another 40 caliber off the street. So, yes, we're getting the guns off the streets. How do you feel about the West Side? Love it. Wouldn't live any place else. Has it improved anyway? Some things have, some haven't. Could you tell me any positive or negative things about it? Uh, it's always been a good neighborhood, close knit neighborhood. Uh, and the people on the west side, despite what you hear or what you people might think, get along well as a community. I love it. I lived here all my life. I'm 73 years old. Why wouldn't I love it? <laughs> Have you seen any changes? Oh, yes. 
lot of different families moved away and everything, and then you got other families moved in. Then you got to get to know certain people. Did it tell me some positive things? Well, what do you want positive? What more positive than that? It was all Italian at one time. <laughs> He's got a, a warning letter for the neighbors. It's kind of the mayor's complaint line, but that's the Blair Woods action figure. Uh, my wife and I bought our house on Rhode Island Street. 16 years ago, lived in our backyard and lived in our house and ignored what was going on on the street itself. Uh, after about 10 years, 10 or 12 years in the house, I, I finally said, all right, my backyard's great. And I looked out front and where there used to be houses, there were empty lots. And where there used to be old Italian women, there were uh, ranchers and, and people not taking care of their property. And so we just, we started forcing ourselves upon our neighbors and saying we're going to plant gardens in your front yard. Uh, we are doing tree planting programs as a way to reforest the city and to revitalize the city after the October storm. DEC provided us a grant so that we could help community groups reforest their areas. This build project here proves to me, at least, and to the people working on it, that the buildings have a tremendous amount of life left in them. Uh, these buildings were built with uh, lumber and, and you know, construction techniques that will, uh, you know, that are hard to, re to replicate. That the, the construction today just is not as substantial. So there's all, all um, you know, reason to believe that we should try to save the buildings that we have. Getting the neighbors out of their houses, getting them to stop complaining about somebody else not doing something, and getting them involved in fixing things themselves. And then not just on their block, but on multiple blocks, and then in larger and larger areas, until ultimately you see people starting garden centers, and you see people you know, creating their own parks, and, and, and painting buildings, and buying buildings that were formerly owned by, by out-of-state investors. This, this is a neighborhood taking ownership for the neighborhood and succeeding because of it.